Welcome to the Peach State and the city of Atlanta, Georgia, home of the 39th Chick-fil-A Bowl, where 8-4 and four Georgia squares off against 10-2 and two Virginia Tech. The fans are in full force and ready to go as we have a sellout crowd for the 10th consecutive year. It's a showdown of the SEC versus the ACC, and we're fixing for a memorable bowl moment of our own. Well, it's a great thing that we're indoors tonight in the Georgia Dome because outside the weather is frightful. Heavy, heavy fog and mist inside. Well, the weather is delightful and the atmosphere is absolutely off the charts. Why? It's the SEC and the ACC. Georgia against Virginia Tech in this Chick-fil-A Bowl game for 2006. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin and welcome to Atlanta, Georgia. And as I said during the rehearsals, I think I'll keep the line. It would be a very good idea if everybody watching this game tonight had to put on a chin strap because we got a couple of defenses that are going to go head to head tonight that absolutely will not fool around with you. Ed Cunningham joins me on the telecast as usual. And to me, the best two matchups of the night are the two offenses of each team going up against the two defenses of each team. That, to me, is the bottom line in the show this evening. And the one thing that everything, everybody's been talking about all week is how the number one defense of the Hokies are in town. Well, let's not forget, Georgia's number nine in the country, and they've taken it as a personal challenge to show what they can do against this Hokie defense. Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator, talks about how it all starts up front. Everybody knows the name Quentin Moses. He was a preseason All-American after a huge season last year. His number's down a little bit. But Charles Johnson, the nickname given to him by Mark Richt is the big bully. They've been waiting for this young man to fulfill his promise. He finally has. He's the one who's put up the huge numbers this year. As far as Virginia Tech is concerned, the story there got off to a good start, and then they lost back-to-back -back games, and everybody said, how? This is such a good club. Coming down the stretch, they not only have been good, and they've been devastatingly good, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. In the six games that they've won, Ron, they've only given up 29 points in those six ball games. Two touchdowns given up, and and they've scored two defensive touchdowns, so they washed it out. They come into the night number one in every major statistical category on defense. This team, there was bickering amongst the players. It could have gone either way, but it came down to these two linebackers, not only two of the best in the conference, two of the best in the country. Vince Hall led the ACC in tackles. Xavier Adibi at 221 pounds can flat out fly. Here come the ball. They look to become the first Georgia team to defeat three ranked opponents in a row, something that they have never done. And how about Virginia Tech? Well, believe it or not, they have never won back-to-back -back bowl games, so that is their hurdle and also their goal this evening. Well, the Chick-fil-A bowl game always seems to be a tight one. SEC leads it 8-6. They lead in points scored, bowl averages, well, 70,487. That is the most for any non-BCS. The victory margin has been 8.4, the closest of all the bowl games. And tonight, the 10th consecutive sellout here in Atlanta. To say that they embrace this bowl game is a mild exaggeration. As you look at Mark Rick, sixth season as the head man in Athens, his record 60 and 17. His bowl record, three and two. And across the way, the veteran in his 20th season as the head coach at Virginia Tech, Frank Beamer. His record, 156, 81 and 2, and his bowl record, 6 and 7. Unbelievable with the retirement of Fisher DeBerry that Frank Beamer trails only Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno for longest tenure at one school. It's been an amazing run for Frank Beamer. It didn't quite start out that way, but he's built a heck of a program. So Georgia won the toss tonight, and they have elected it to defer. And this is Andy Bailey, who has the ball teed at the 35. And the Bulldogs and the Hokies are set to go. It's a spinner, a short kick, going to come down at the six-yard line, and that's Morgan. Josh Morgan gets a block. 
to the outside, 25, and is belted out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Well, the Virginia Tech season recap. 10 and 2, 6 and 2 in the conference, at second in the Coastal Division. They started the season 4 and all, and then they peaked at number 11 in the poll. They lost to Georgia Tech and crushed by BC, and then defensive coordinator Bud Foster said, uh, Guys, I'm going to take away the lunch pail. It's going to be mine. It's going to be an 11-man thing each ball game. So led by their defense, the Hokies won their last six holding opponents to under five points a ball game. Play action to Orr. Pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be Charles Johnson who will get a hand on it. play as they stay conservative and or will be tackled before he gets out of bounds out at the 19 yard line Tony Taylor was the man who was there to make the hit well and you can't blame Brian Stein springing the offensive coordinator for going conservative there Brandon or we heard from Dr. Punch still battling that ankle injury we'll see couldn't really tell there if he's 100 percent but they just needed to get some distance for their punting unit Nick Schmidt 6'2", 276. He's a left footer. We asked Frank in the meeting yesterday, have you already recruited another left footer? He said, I've recruited a good kicker, but he's a right footer. We went, oh, but does he weigh 280? <laughs> no. <laughs> 12 years in a row, they've had a left footer. Henderson, the man deep. This ball is going to turn over. Long driving kick all the way back to the 32. Henderson looks for a block, cuts it back into the middle, and is going to be stopped short of the 30-yard line. So here's a recap on the Georgia season. Eight and four, that's regular season, four and four in the SEC, that's fourth in the SEC East. They started the season five and zero, oh, and the quarterback carousel began. Joe Tarasensky, Matthew Stafford, and Joe Cox all playing. Then they lost four of five, including losses to Vanderbilt and Kentucky, and they finished the year upsetting number five Auburn and number 16 Georgia Tech. So let's see if that momentum carries over to the bowl game. From the shotgun, quick pass over the middle, and the ball is dropped. So now let's meet the Georgia offense. How you doing, guys? I'm Mark Trace Miller, University of Georgia's tight end number 87. To represent the offense, up front we have Nick Jones, our captain, quarterback Matt Stafford, the specimen, and running back Craig Lunkin, the Met truck. <laughs> the specimen. And the Mack truck at 225, Lunkin started the last eight ball games after a great second half against Colorado to help in that victory. From the shotgun, they go with the running play to Lumpkin. Lumpkin that breaks it open. 50, 45, and it's going to be tackled down around the 40-yard line. So a misdirection play. 26 yards, and the Bulldogs with the initial first down. And this is something that Georgia struggled with, especially during that 405 losing streak. Missed tackle, and that's what you're going to see. Such a long layoff, Ron. A lot of times you wonder how crisp the tackling is going to be early in a game. Virginia Tech, one of the best tackling teams in the country, missed a tackle right at the line of scrimmage, and Lumpkin goes 26 yards because of it. So for the first time tonight across midfield, you see that defense moving around at the last minute. Pressure on the quarterback. He steps up, gets the ball complete. Good for the first down to Massaqua. And let's meet the Virginia Tech defense. What's up? My name is Vince Hall. I'm a linebacker of Virginia Tech. I'm going to introduce you to number one defense in the nation. First up, we got the headbusters, number 96, Nolan Burchett, a.k.a. Mentor. Next up, we got the heavy hitters. Number 11, Xavier DB, a.k.a. Golden Child. And last but not least, we got D-Block. Number 18, Brandon Flowers, a.k.a. Dot. Third down, and Ed, they need to take it to the 18-yard line. Again for the shotgun formation, Stafford retreats over the middle, and he threw that one way too tall. Chris Durham is the man that he wanted. Brandon Flowers was the closest man to it. 
Well, and it's worth mentioning that Georgia gets their kicker back. Brandon Katu, who has been so consistent, who pulled a hamstring before Tennessee. He has not kicked since Old Miss on September 30th. Finally healthy. This guy's been almost automatic for them all year. I know the coaching staff, particularly the head coach, was very excited about this prospect. Ball will be placed down at the 29. 39 yard attempt. Got plenty of distance. And he's got it. 10-49 left in this opening quarter. And it is Georgia who goes on the board first. Three to nothing Bulldogs. Josh Morgan on the return. He'll take it out over the 27-yard line. Third down, they need to 49. Looking, drills the ball, thrown completely away from Royal, the intended receiver. Not even close there is Brian Evans, the redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, was there to make the cover. This already is the third punt uh, early in this ball game for Virginia Tech. We have 139 showing on the clock opening quarter. Well, and you hit it right on the head. We've got a sophomore quarterback at Virginia Tech, Glennon, first-year starter. Matthew Stafford, true freshman, first-year starter. It looks like Glennon is the freshman. He just does not look, even when they're giving him time, Ron, he doesn't look good in the pocket. Henderson again, the deep man. Schmidt waits for the snap. Left footer, and again, the punt's going to turn over. Fair catch is signal for and made at the 15-yard line by Henderson. Gets it in the flat. Intercepted by Virginia Tech. And that's Brendan Hill, the redshirt senior linebacker out of Newport News, Virginia. Well, this is exactly the defense that Matthew Stafford said he had a hard time figuring out. Virginia Tech runs what's called an inverted cover two where the cornerbacks actually bail out and become the deep safeties and the outside linebackers sprint to where the cornerbacks were to play the flat. Hill, a former wide receiver and safety, an excellent read on this ball. Stafford never saw the outside linebacker over there. That's a freshman mistake. And what did Georgia say yesterday? With the youth at quarterback, whatever we do, don't force the issue, especially on your side of the field, Ron. And, and that was the key to that two-game win streak. No, no interceptions. First one in three games. Sam Wheeler, the tight end, flips from the right side over to the left. They'll hand it off to Orr. Runs it into the boundary. A couple of side steps, and he'll wind up with a gain of four, maybe five yards on the play. Tony Taylor comes over from his linebacking spot to make the tackle. This is the first trip for After Virginia Tech over, into Georgia territory. The the personal foul was called, Ron, after the play. Well, and you can't. Boy, if they call the personal foul on that, I mean, I know, listen, you don't want it to get out of hand, but that's just two guys putting their hands on each other. That's an awfully tough call to go half the distance to the goal for that. Well, the penalty takes it down to the six-yard line, so it is now first and goal, Virginia Tech. So back-to-back -back mistakes on back-to-back -back plays. First an interception, and then a personal foul called on the Bulldogs. And a short trip for the Hokies. And the Bulldogs rise up and keep them out of the end zone. Weatherford in motion, the fullback. They run behind his block. It's Orr, the four. Maybe to the three-yard line, and that's it. As Trey Battle, the first man to come over and make the hit. And the book on him as we hit the end of the quarter is don't tell him that there's something he can't do because Trey Battle will prove you wrong. Let's take a timeout as we head to the second 15 minutes of play. It is three to nothing Georgia, but Virginia Tech threatening on the lip of the cup. We'll be right back. So we're back at Atlanta, Georgia, three to nothing as we start the second quarter. And the first quarter on offense had Virginia Tech had a total offense of 40 yards, minus 23 yards in penalties. So 17 yards is what they could account for but two back-to-back -back errors an interception and then a personal foul against Georgia and as a result the ball is inside the five and on second and goal Ron this is where the play action has to come into play you've got an I formation 
Two wide receivers, tight end. I don't think you waste a run here. I think you try to throw this one into the end zone. Gillen again flips the tight end Wheeler. He comes into the boundary, the short side of the field. And it's Royal in motion. Play action looking for the end zone. Got a man throws to the fullback. And Weatherford well underthrown right as he got across the goal line. So it's Trey Battle who was there with the cover. And now it's a third down situation. Well, and Sean Glennon's got to settle down, Ron. He, he's just... He's not confident in the pocket right now. He had Sam Wheeler, his tight end, running open on the corner route, and he just wouldn't pull the trigger. He, he's not trusting his eyes. He's in his head right now. Justin Harper checks into the ball game, number 81. Now, he is a 6-4 receiver and would be perfect for a fade route here. Glennon, 3 of 8 for 21 yards and has missed his last three attempts. Hands it to Orr, right side at the two, at the one, will not get into the end zone, and it's going to be fourth down. Ed, I think you go. You go for yeah, it? Yeah, I think you go here. I think that's yeah, the signal that Frank Beamer has just given his uh, his uh, charges. Tony Taylor and Trey Battle combining on the stop. You're going into your own end zone. There's a good sea of orange and maroon behind your goal line, so noise should not be a problem, and this could get that crowd, your crowd, back into it. I like this call by Frank Beamer. And I think he goes straight ahead, Ron. If penetration can kill you, I think he just goes straight ahead from this power eye. Handed off to Orr, hit at the line of scrimmage, second effort, touchdown, Virginia Tech. Jarvis Jackson made the collision first, but could not maintain his position or his ground. And Brandon Orr scored it. Well, Brandon Orr is a good combination of both power and speed. That's what makes him first team all ACC, even despite the injury that Dr. Punch talked about. That time he gets hit behind the line of scrimmage and keeps fighting through. Good job by the offensive line, too. They kept pushing, Ron, because it could have blown up. From the sky cam, you could see also that once he got hit at the line of scrimmage, all of a sudden he really started to churn the legs. Mm -hmm. That was enough impetus to uh, push him into the end zone. Rinder, number 70, with a very good block. And he is being helped off the field right now, and the, the trainers will get a look at him. Brandon Pace to attempt the extra point, trying to make it a 7-3 to three Virginia Tech game, and he does. So as we go to break, let's take another look at the interception that set up this touchdown. Ball picked off right there by Brendan Hill. 7-3, now Virginia Tech takes the lead. Well, if you look at this defense, I was talking about how it's an inverted two. It's unusual to see. Watch Macho Harris as he comes backing out. Hill's going to go to trail. He's taking the underneath, so you have two corners that are backing out to be the deep safeties. It's a very different defense that quarterbacks are not very used to seeing, and he just didn't see Hill coming underneath Marquez Milner. Asher Allen from just inside the 10, and breaks the tackle at the 20, 25-30, and finally stopped out at the 33-yard line. So 27 yards on the return by Allen. Ron Franklin, along with Ed Cunningham and Dr. Jerry Punch, coming to you from the Chick-fil-A Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. As we mentioned off the top of the telecast, very, very foggy and rainy in the Atlanta area, but plain inside in the Georgia Dome, the weather's absolutely perfect, and this is a wonderful atmosphere. Play action. Stafford rolls to his right, throws long into double coverage, and the ball almost picked off. If I'm Mike Bobo, I would get that young man on the phone right now and tell him, Matthew, that is what got you in trouble during that four-game stretch, or five-game stretch where we lost four ball games. This is a terrible decision. Falling backwards, he saw that the safety was over there, Roland Miner and D.J. Parker. That's a bad throw. Bobo is the man who holds the record for interceptions at Georgia with 17. And Stafford said to him jokingly, Coach, at the rate it's going, uh, I'm going to catch your record. And Bobo said, no, you're not. And he said, why? He said, but I'm going to take you out. That's well, why. They won't take him out of this game because he's the guy. No, I'm not saying yeah, that. Right, I'm just yeah, simply yeah. saying it. No, but I'm saying throws like that may make him want to rethink it. Here's the kick, line drive. 
retreating all the way to the 13 yard line is Royal. Gets by one tackler, and here he comes. One man to beat. And will be pushed out of bounds around the 35 yard line. Marcus Brown with the defensive stop. 54 yards in the kick. 54 on the return. We'll be right back. So there was no timeout called on the field. And on the running play, Virginia Tech took it for an eight-yard gain. Kenny Lewis in the ball game, number 20, a freshman out of Danville, Virginia. Second down and two. They need to take it to the Georgia 20-yard line. This could be the most important offensive series in the ball game. The way these two defenses are playing. Glennon with the audible. Play clock is at three, down to two. He'll give it to Lewis, and they try to sweep. And what a great defensive play! As right there is number 99, and again, Charles Johnson is just Johnny on the spot, making the play and knocking him down for a loss. The reason that Mark Richt gave Charles Johnson the nickname of Big Bully was there were times in practice last spring, Ron, where they actually had to take him off the field so the offense could get something done. The offensive line, we got the report that Brandon Fry is down, so a couple of backups in there. They're not going to be able to hang with this heat. Here. Brandon is back in the ball game right now. On third down conversions, Virginia Tech, one of five. Again, they need to take it to the 20-yard line, so it's third and five. Going and steps up, drills the ball, has it complete. And boy, this is going to be a very important spot as Royal made the catch, and let's see where they're going to put it down. I think they're going to be just short, and I wouldn't be shocked if Frank Beamer went for it again, Ron. It's awfully close. You can see where the yellow line is. And the linesman, now the referee, John Bible, comes over, and they're going to call a timeout and bring the chains from all the way across the way. If it's not a first down, it's just a couple of inches. Frank Beamer down there giving it a good look. This was good. Glennon finally sits in the pocket, delivers the ball on time. He was struggling with that a little earlier in the game, and that, that's one of the things that the coaches from Virginia Tech said is that Glennon's been able to overcome bad starts a little better as the season has progressed. That time he looked very good in the pocket. Well, they stretch it out. That is a first down. You see at the strike of the football. So by the nose is what they got the first down by. Dr. Jerry Punch, let's check back with you on the sideline. Hey, Ron, both those offensive linemen, as you mentioned, back in the ballgame, Brandon Fry, sprained left ankle. He may not be able to go very long. Sergio Render, likewise, sprained left ankle. They've retaped him. He should be able to stay in. The one they're concerned about is Fry, how long he can go. Okay, Jerry, very quick work down there. Help us keep an eye. They're rotating a lot of people. Two tight end formation, Virginia Tech. Brings it back the other way, and he'll have a couple of yards. Paul Oliver finally makes the stop on him. Well, right now, it looks like, Ron, every time that Virginia Tech tries to run that stretch play, the white jerseys are pushing up the field, and Orr has nowhere to go. It's hard to tell if that left ankle is bothering him or not. He just can't even get started. I think what they need to go back to, Virginia Tech, is anything just straight ahead. Don't don't try to run sideways. Georgia on the ends is just too powerful and too fast. You could see from that uh, camera up above that Paul Oliver made a very sure tackle, grabbed the ankle, was not going to let it go. Second and eight. Looky right up in the middle. The ball is caught at the 12-yard line by Harper. And Justin's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down as Brian Evans, the redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, makes the tackle for Georgia. Well, Harper was a guy. They have so many talented receivers on this roster, and Harper was a guy who started separating himself at the end of the season. Very short-handed guy. Made a good catch there. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Ron, on a third and two situation, maybe take a shot. You've got guys packed in. Maybe sneak somebody down the middle on a post. You can see the numbers in red zone offense. With a little pitch or 10 at the five as they reversed. The influence with the blockers went to the left. They gave him a counter step, and then he came back to the right to the short side of the field, and Oliver finally pushes him out. 
Yep. Trying to get the flow. Everybody going that way. Very nice job. When the fullback goes that way, that's what they were following. Ron was Jesse Allen, the fullback, going in that A-gap to the left side. And Marcus Howard, number 38, who is in the ballgame replacing Quentin Moses, did not stay at home and allowed him to achieve the corner. And I'm sure that that is something that Brian Steinspring had seen was the fast-chasing defensive end. Let's make him pay for it. So it's first down. First and goal, Virginia Tech. They lead 7-3. Straight ahead at the 3, at the 2, and down to the 1 is Brandon Orr. It's going to be second down and goal from about 36 inches away. Well, it's hard to put into... If you didn't follow Virginia Tech all year, it's hard to really realize how important Brandon Orr is. He's a young man who was struggling, calls himself. He said, listen, flat out, I was a knucklehead. I wasn't going to class. I wasn't doing the right things. He had shoulder surgery, went home last spring, and got his mind right. Worked at a 7-Eleven warehouse, and so he came back. He's been going to class. He's become a leader. He had two games in a row over 200 yards, and he's so important down inside the five-yard line with that power. Very intense look on the face of Frank Beamer. You would think that he was trailing. Straight ahead, or again, got hit in midair. No signal, and he did not score. Jarvis Jackson, number 45 for the Bulldogs, is the man who made contact when he was in midair. George is saying that the ball came loose. We still have no signal. Yes, we do. At the half-yard line, you could see the linesman put up three fingers saying it's third down. Yeah, the officials came in and were already spotting the ball. This little inside trap play render trying to get perfect timing by Jackson. Push. Absolutely. And Jackson, a guy who's been fighting some foot ailments and some shoulder problems. Boy, just, well, from that angle. Now, are they saying maybe his forward progress was had stopped been before stopped. he reached? Yeah. Had been stopped. But the ball now was only about six inches away. I think now they're, they're going to review it. From that video, Ron, I might be. I think his forward progress may have been stopped. I don't know that they're going to be able to overturn it. It looked to me like he was almost moving backwards before he reached the ball out. All so. right, here's the jolt. You see 45 right in the middle. He hits him, body bend, and he's heading backwards. Yeah. See, that to I me says forward progress so. is ended before he I reached agree. the ball across. I, I don't think they're going to overturn this. So. Now you're going to be looking at a third down and oh, it's a touchdown. They have signal touchdown. So the call is reversed. Well, that didn't look like indisputable video evidence to me to, to turn that over. He still had third and inches. So I think maybe Virginia Tech was going to score, but it looked like forward progress had been stopped. I don't think there was any question that Frank was going to go. Yeah. Go oh, yeah. Even if they didn't get it on third, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was going to be the situation. Yeah. Extra point attempt to come, so they reversed the call on the field, and they did not take very long to look at it and make the decision. Whistles and the flag is down. So the kick, which uh, went right through the uprights, they'll have to do it again. Well, how many times through the years have you seen Virginia Tech with special teams and making plays on defense get the Both momentum for their offense? Eight on the offense, five yard penalty. This momentum started with the interception by Brendan Hill and then the great punt return by Eddie Royal. And all of a sudden, this building's awfully quiet. Rick Boone is a man who moves, moved a little quickly. And Pace will attempt it again. Good pass and a good kick. So it's good. And as we head to break, here is the play that broke it open. Eddie Royal on this return right here. 54 yards on the punt. But the tough thing for the Georgia Bulldogs, it was 54 yards on the return. And then Orr scores it. 14-3 to Virginia Tech. Orr. Getting his arm retaped, just scored the touchdown to put his club up 14 to three. And here's Asher Allen. He had a very good return last time, and this time he gets collared just short of the 25 by Dorian Porch. Blitz coming off the corner. Pass is thrown in and out of the hands of Mario Rayleigh. 
that's two drops on the part of Georgia in the early going. Well, the first drive was 45 yards. The last three drives, they had two yards. Well, listen, Bud Foster, if there's a better defensive coordinator in the country, uh, Bo Pelini awfully good down at LSU, I, I, but I'm not sure there's better. I think it took him a little while for his guys to get used to the speed of the game again, but once they did, Ron, we've seen these guys. This defense is as good as advertised. Play action, sets in the pocket, pressure. And the freshman steps up, throws long, got a man wide open, and he couldn't hold on. That's Kenneth Harris. Oh, my goodness. Yes, if I only had it over again. Well, all the time in the world, this play took forever to develop. Kenneth Harris is going to come on the left side of your screen, runs a double move, the corner to the post. Stafford does an excellent job stepping up and just a little. You know, Ron, that's one of the things that Stafford, the reason they love him, he's just got a, such a great arm. But as he starts to mature, he'll get a little better feel for that ball. He could have put just a little that's, more air on that's it. Just it. a it, touch. Particularly with the defensive back falling having down. Yeah. fallen down. Just put air under just let the man run under. Absolutely. He'll learn. Third yeah. down and 10. They need to take it to the 34-yard line. Pressure up the middle, and he gets by the first wave, but not the second. Sack at the 18-yard line. Nolan Burchette is the first man there, and it was Aaron Rouse who was really putting the pressure on and forcing him out of the pocket. Wow, this is a great blitz call by Bud Foster. They're going to cross it up in the middle, and then late the safety's going to come. This is... They're bringing three people in the middle. There's only two to block. And Stafford, because it's coming so late, doesn't realize that they're not going to pick up that extra man. What an excellent call by Bud Foster, bringing three men through the middle of that offensive line. Looks like they were coming in waves. Gordon Edikelso stands back to punt at the four-yard line. Third time that Georgia will have punted here in his first half. Kick it away. I, to me, kick this thing 35, 40 yards out of bounds. Too much momentum. Eddie Royal had a 40 or 54 yard return last time. They try to kick it away from him, but they pay for it with a Virginia Tech bounce. It almost took it 10 yards back upfield. So let's take a timeout. 14 to 3, Virginia Tech. 4.55 until halftime. So it's 14 to 3, Virginia Tech. And Ed, special teams and also defense has made the difference for Tech. Well, early on, Matthew Stafford throws the ball late and behind Milner, picked off by Hill, finish off with Orr on the touchdown, and then Eddie Royal goes 54 yards on this punt return. And then Brandon Orr scores or doesn't he, whatever, they gave him the seven points, but on only 74 yards of total offense, Virginia Tech now with 14 points and good field position again. Marshman comes back in the ball game at uh, left tackle, replacing Brandon Fry. Kenny Lewis back in the game at tailback. That ball is tipped. Kenny Royal can throw it because it was a backward pass. Wide open, the tight end at the five, and touchdown, Sam Wheeler. 53 yards, and here is the difficult thing for Georgia. When the ball got tipped, they all stopped. But it was obviously a backward pass. Eddie Royal never broke motion or stride. What an excellent job by Royal. This was set up the whole way. They're going to have the tight end running right down the middle, Ron. This was going to be a throw right from the start. And just because it got tipped, you're exactly right. The entire Georgia defense stopped. The safety had already come up and bit on the ball. And Sam Wheeler, a freshman tight end running wide open down the middle. What a shocker. And the Georgia people sitting stunned in silence right now. But what has just happened was a, a very good play call. But the ball getting tipped made it even worse because they did slow down. Wheeler with the touchdown. And let's go down to the sideline. Dr. Jerry punch with Mark Rick. Coach, after the opening drive, the offense has sputtered a bit. What do you uh, do in the second half to get on track? Well, we got to do a little bit of everything better. We're not protected well. We're not providing much space for our runners. We got to do everything better right now. Big momentum shift just before halftime. What do you say to your kids in the locker room at half? Well, as usual, it's 30 minutes. We didn't play very good in the first 30. We better turn things around in the second if we're going to have any chance at all. Uh, Virginia Tech's doing a great job right now. We got to get it going. Hey, thanks for your time, Coach. All right. 
Ron? Okay, Jerry, we are at halftime, and our score at the break is Virginia Tech 21 and Georgia 3. Now to Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz. 21 to 3, our score at halftime. And although that score looks like a huge amount, particularly with the defense of Virginia Tech, I see two first downs for Georgia, only five for Virginia Tech. Still, if you're Georgia, what did you talk about at halftime? Just settle down. You're not out of the game. They get the ball first coming out to start this half. They've got to get something on the board, Ron. They've got to get some energy back in this building. Just talk to your young quarterback. Listen, you've decided to go with Stafford. He's the guy with all the talent. Just let him settle down and, and get some throws. He had some stuff open that he missed. Just get him settled down. I think they'll be okay. Let's see. Three from 21 is 18, so it means you got to score 19 points. 19 points and a half against Virginia Tech has been difficult. insurmountable. But the kick is going to be returned. Allen. And he's not going to make it to the 15 yard line. Now let's take a look at the New York Life game track on the first half. Well, it's been so difficult on Georgia defensively. You mentioned how it just Virginia Tech has not had a ton of offense. 53 of those total yards came on that one throwback to the tight end Wheeler, but their defense is just constantly being put in bad positions because of turnovers and special teams. It's been a great night for football, particularly if you're a Hokie fan in Georgia trying to get something going offensively. Play action. Got a man right over the middle. Fullback Sutherland. Sutherland will take it inside the 30, and he's down to around the 28-yard line. Parker on the stop, but it's good for 26 yards. Well, this is excellent call by Mike Bobo. Sutherland comes in motion and then just slips to the outside. It's a perfect play action. Remember, Lumpkin has had some success running. And Vince Hall and Xavier Adibi sucked right up into it. And a, a very nice throw. Listen, this oh, young quarterback. Put air yeah, that absolutely. One. When he gets, when he doesn't have to think, he can just throw it. He He's a very talented quarterback. They'll go from the shotgun with two tailbacks, Lumpkin and Ware in the ballgame as well. And it's Ware who got the handoff, takes it to around the 25-yard line. Vince Hall comes over to make the tackle. Now here's a look at uh, Mike Bobo. Now the offensive coordinator has been designated that for next year. As uh, Neil Callaway leaving to become the head coach at UAB. And uh, Mike was told on Thanksgiving Day that he also was going to ca start calling the plays. And for everybody that thought, as you look at Neil Callaway on the sideline, that that would be a big deal, I don't really think it changes anything. He's not going to call it that differently than what Mark Richt would have called. No, and, and he's got a guy he can lean on in most situations. But Mark Rick said, I'm going to let him do it. I'm not going to bother him. Rolls to the right, gets this pass just a little too far, intended for Henderson. And you know, Coach Holt made a, a really good point at halftime, talking about it doesn't matter who's calling the plays when <laughs> yeah. you've got a defense that right. is dialing in on everything you're trying to do. Mike Bobo, I remember doing uh, the Outback Bowl with him in Georgia against Wisconsin. He holds the record for 119, 119, but 19 straight completions, and he was 26 of 28 for the afternoon. And his quarterback, he's also the quarterback coach, and that's, to me, the more important job tonight. He's calling good plays, but he's just got to get his quarterback dialed in a little better. Pressure from behind. The ball is loose. Was his arm going forward? Now a beanbag does come down from John Bible, the referee. And it was Chris Ellis from behind watching. Right at the bottom of your screen, he goes right by. An excellent move on Michael Turner. Turner, who was injured earlier in the year, just turned right out of his stance. And Ellis, who worked so hard in the offseason to gain a little bit of strength but not lose any speed, does an excellent job. This is a 51-yard attempt as Velasco is the man who made the recovery. And he's capable. Ball is down, plenty of distance, and I'll tell you, he just nailed it from 51 yards. Brandon Cattu, the junior, out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. And as we talk way back in the first quarter, they were so happy to get him back after a leg injury because of being a weapon like that. We'll be right back. And here with the Chick-fil-A Bowl, the field goal of 51 yards we had just a moment ago by Katu is one yard shy of the all-time record. 51 yards, though, second longest in Chick-fil-A Bowl history. The amazing part about that statistic is 
Defensively, they've scored two touchdowns, so they wiped both of those out. So they're basically pitching a shutout in the last 26 plus quarters. Mims with a kickoff, and it's an onside kick, and it looks like Georgia got it. Excellent, excellent call, and Katu did the drag where he kicked it and ran right next to it. Excellent job. Excuse me. It was Brian Mims. Pardon yes. me. Brian Mims, an excellent job. Watch how he drags he the He makes ball. the recovery, I Absolutely. believe. Yes, he does. Yep. And in fact, he reached out and grabbed it away from a Virginia Tech player, uh, number 26, Cody Grimm. Cody was about to grab the ball. He just took it away from him. I love the call, but the call can't happen without perfect execution. Mims could not have done a better job of hitting that ball the exact speed he needed to let it go 10 and then fall on it himself. Frank Beamer cannot be very pleased right now. This could allow Georgia to regain momentum and get right back in the game. Hit from behind. There's not going to be anything for wear. And a flag comes in late at the 45 as Chris Ellis and Carlton Powell combined on the stop. Personal foul, face mask number 99 on the defense. Carlton Powell will cost him 15 more yards. Hey, Ron, it looks like a little Moe's coming back for Georgia. And that, that is a personal foul. Grabbed it and would not let go. No, he sort of brought him down by it. So now the ball, he's inside the 40-yard line. Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, looks up at the clock. And he's thinking momentum as well. Absolutely. And, and this is what we were talking about earlier. Mark Richt allowing Mike Bobo to call the plays. He said, I was looking forward to growing as a head coach. That was a great call. Sutherland and Ware in the backfield. You see the shifting defensively by Virginia Tech. And now I think we've had contact. And it's going to be against Virginia Tech. Offside, 79 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Down. That was a heads-up play by Nick Jones, the center. I think Corey Robertson is the man who was offside. That was a really heads-up play. As he saw Robertson in the neutral zone, he just snapped it right, right away. You don't do that a lot, especially with a freshman quarterback. But that was a nice play by Jones. So that's 20 yards in penalties. All of a sudden, it is a first and five at the Virginia Tech 32-yard line. 21 to 6. Tech on top. But Georgia with momentum. First down run. Right side. Inside the 30. Down to the 25. Danny Ware was the ball carrier. A DB made the stop. And I think the Georgia lineman, yes, yeah, is down go. because he got rolled up on from behind Fernando Velasco the junior out of Rins Georgia well they need him to stay in Ron you mentioned this earlier but watch the huge hole on the right side of this offensive line Mark Richt when he was talking to Jerry Punch said we've got to give our running backs more room you can't give any more room let's see what happens at the very end that's a DB yeah. on the chase that rolls up but Velasco only six scholarship offensive linemen suited tonight for Georgia they can't lose him and one of them has been ill so they are very slim in that department. Lumpkin and Ware, the two tailbacks this time. And the handoff will go to Lumpkin. Breaks it open at the 20. He almost broke it all the way to the end zone. Linebacker blitz in the middle. Ball is dropped by Sutherland. The big fullback was there. The pass was there. And he couldn't hold on to it. Well, this is almost the exact same play we saw run earlier. It's the play fake with Sutherland going up to the linebackers. And once again, they caught Virginia Tech in a blitz. And Kerry Wade, the safety, was late getting over. Vince Hall and a DB came. They had it, and Sutherland dropped it. That is something that has haunted this Georgia offense all season. That might have been a touchdown, Ron. Oh, I, I have every confidence it would have been because Sutherland is so big at 250 pounds. Danny Ware, the lone setback this time. Third down. Deep in the pocket. Drills it and has it complete for the first down to Durham. And that's going to be at the 11 and a half yard line. Well, we saw Chancellor, the true freshman, come in for Brandon Flowers. And this is Durham. Durham, the reason he's in there playing is because of his sure hands. Of all the guys 
where they were having the problems with the drops. Durham, a true freshman, had the, the surest hands of the bunch, and that's why he's in there. He goes up and snatches it, taking advantage of the other true freshman, Chancellor. First down, and they have spotted the ball at around the 12-yard line. Now Stafford with an audible. Under three minutes to play third quarter. And Georgia trying to get back in this one in earnest. Right up the middle. There is a nice opening for Danny Weir. And he'll take it to around the seven-yard line. Barry Booker makes the stop. Well, Mark Rick got tired of seeing Virginia Tech, Tech take advantage of their kicking game. And he decided to do the onside kick with Mims. And it could not. Uh, listen, it's a gutsy call, but it has to be executed, Ron. And it was executed perfectly by Mims. And all of a sudden, you see how it translates. The energy level for Georgia is through the roof. Their offensive line is moving guys off the ball. There's running room for Ware and Lumpkin. I would think play action pass here. Virginia Tech's going to suck up. You've got a couple of tight ends you can release. Play action right over the middle. Milner, the tight end. Touchdown. Well, when you start to get the running game going, Ron, it opens up so much stuff. On a second down, this could not be a better call by Mike Bobo. Milner does a little slow release. He looks at a guy like he's going to block him and then releases. Excellent call. Mike Bobo is going to be a fine offensive coordinator with calls like that. The two with the extra point. It's up and it's good. And uh, go call your neighbor who changed channels and started to go to bed. Bring him back. 21 to 13, our score, Virginia Tech. <laughs> our score. 21 to 13 now as Georgia has come back with 10 unanswered points and Andy Bailey prepares to kick it off and you can bet one thing the gentlemen on the front line all five of <laughs> they're them they're not moving wearing Virginia Tech colors <laughs> are not going to go into a retreat mode until the ball is kicked now they do here's another high hanger a spinner at the five yard line and it's Morgan Morgan gets by the first, will not get by the second, which means he will finish short of the 20-yard line. And, Dr. Punch, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, the year was 1973, and the top Billboard single was Crocodile Rock by Elton John. The Godfather won the Best Picture of the Academy Awards. Archie Bunker's All in the Family was the popular TV show. But it was also the last time the University of Georgia lost to Vanderbilt and Kentucky in the same season, and then roared back at the end of that year to beat Auburn and Georgia Tech. How'd they finish out the year? They came to what was then the Peach Bowl and beat an Atlantic Coast Conference team ranked in the top 20, Maryland. Could it be deja vu for the Bulldogs? Could be all over again. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Clock runs. We are at 1.15 left in the third quarter. Running play or hurdles a man, takes it out to the 24-yard line. Ball came loose, and the official now says no. Right. He was down. Paul Oliver on the stop. And that is going to be the last play of the third quarter. So the four fingers go in the air by both ball clubs. And let's take a timeout. We're about to head to the final 15, and we get a brand new ball game as Georgia has come back with 10 unanswered points in the third. It is 21-13, Virginia Tech. Stay with us. So the scoring by quarters, 10 unanswered by Georgia. They're right back in the thing. Boy, look at this Georgia yeah. offense. Well, and it all started with a great call by Mark Rick to go for that onside kick. What an excellent decision by him. Straight ahead with the running play, just not much doing. Brandon Orr will go for a couple. And Danny Verdun Wheeler making the stop. You know, Mark Rick uh, giving up the play calling duty for the first time in 13 years. Such a difficult decision by him. He finally came to peace with it and decided it was the right thing to do and he's going to go during the offseason and visit with some business leaders some CEOs that he really respects and talk about how he could become a better CEO because that's the role that he's going to start filling in and I think that decision that onside kick is starting that process of taking the next step as a head coach. 
quick pass far sideline thrown a little bit behind the intended receiver Josh Morgan. This is a third down and I mean this Georgia crowd has really awakened their club with 10 unanswered in the third. They're right back in this ball game. Looking for the first down pumped it once now under pressure throws it the other way and it's intercepted at the 37 yard line by Tony Taylor. decision Charles Johnson is the man who sent everything haywire and there is a flag down but Johnson is the man that kept applying the pressure well Trey battle by the way that Mark Rick was talking to Trey battle I bet you he's going to get called for some type of personal foul and hurt this after the play personal foul number four on Virginia Tech that's a 15 yard penalty first down well, they actually call Eddie Royal. Trey Battle may have been over there jawing, and Mark Rick was very upset. They actually called Eddie Royal, and boy, that's a huge, huge turn of events. Well, let's take a look and see what we. There's Royal, number four. Battle going for the block. He hit him in the face. And Mark Rick standing there turning around saying throw the flag. Battle. Ron, they always say it's the guy who hits back that get, gets yeah, called. They both hit each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. But it's because Royal did it second. Added. Absolutely. Lumpkin in the ball game at tailback. And they hand it off. They keep it. No end around. Got him at the 15, 10, 5. Milner tackled at the two yard line. in the pass play. Well, Stafford did an unbelievable job hiding this ball on his hip. He went for the play fake. As he goes to hand this off to Lunk and watch, he sits it and fakes the end around and just sat in there perfectly to A.J. Bryant. And the defense for Virginia Tech never saw it. And Milner waited, 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 and then he's running one-on-one. -on -one. First and goal from the two. Sutherland, the fullback, hit behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose a yard. Vince Hall is the man who came in. I would suggest to you the situation, the shoe is on the other foot. In the first half, Georgia was stunned when Virginia Tech scored in 10 minutes 21 points. Well, right now, if they take this into the end zone, it's going to be inside of 10 minutes that Georgia will have put 17 points on the board. And if you're Virginia Tech, Expect to play action here. Do not allow the strong safeties to get sucked up. You've got Milner lined up right here. Vade, Milner couldn't hold on. Much better job that time by Virginia Tech. Still almost, a, boy, this is a really nice throw, Ron, because the coverage is there. That's Kerry Wade, the senior safety, who's turning and running, and Stafford still almost fit that ball in. And Miner also with, with a bump on him. Very legal. Georgia, we show six drop passes on the night. It is third down and goal. That's Milner in motion. And they run a counter. Touchdown, Craig Lumpkin. finding his wheels watch this it looks like it's going to be an option and then it comes right back the other way excellent counter motion plus Ron they've spread it out but so see it's not... a tight end Absolutely. and that's how they crossed him up Milner they Came stopped him around. behind the yep. tackle and then they they brought him back the other way almost like a pulling guard and he took the defender out and he walked into the end zone and now you're at that point you're Georgia because of the two field goals you have to go for two watch for a rub route down here on the bottom Stafford looking deep in the end zone. Got it to Milner. Two-point conversion is good. We're tied at 21. Hello, Mike Bobo. What a job of play calling in this second half. He's taken them to the woodshed so far.
The interception by Taylor. And then the counter play. The touchdown and then the two point conversion to Milner. Georgia has tied this ball game at 21. Well, over a 10 minute period back in the first half, as you take a look at the quarterbacks, Stafford 126 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, and Glennon 67 yards on the night. But back in the first half, it looked as though Virginia Tech was going to run away with it with 21 unanswered points. Now, Georgia 17 unanswered in the second half. This comes from the 12. It's Morgan. And Morgan will finally be tackled around the 28 yard line. Well, you've got Milner to the inside. He's going to try to run a pick for Rayleigh coming to the inside, but they fight through it. Watch Stafford. He looks to Rayleigh to see if it's there and it's not. And then he follows up and finds Milner in the back of the end zone. Rod, that is great quarterback play. The first read's not read. there. Absolutely. And give Milner credit for following through. The rub's not there. He finished his route. Excellent read. Excellent execution by a freshman Did quarterback. Did not stop. Nope. He uh, continued his route. Brandon Orr, the man at tailback. Now let's see if the Hokies can come up with an answer because they have been answered by Georgia. Fakes it to Orr. Pressure hit from behind. Ball is loose. Georgia football. Brett Moses. Charles Johnson is the man who caused the turnover. Charles Johnson was challenged by his coaches to get better and better and better. That time, it's, it's a mismatch, Ron. He's working one-on-one -on -one against a freshman tight end. Very simple move, just drops the shoulder, finishes to the backside. You, you cannot expect a freshman tight end to block Charles Johnson, especially when the momentum has swung back to Georgia. You could have held him. <laughs> That's, that's about, that's all about the only way you could have yeah, gotten. Absolutely. Lumpkin and Weir, the tailbacks. Georgia with a first down at the 19. Pass out of the backfield, and he dropped the football to anywhere. It's a short touchdown. Wheel route just took him out of the backfield. Nobody picked him up. We should mark that play, Ron. <laughs> if, this, if this ends up being a field goal attempt on this drive, it couldn't have been run any better. It's a very difficult catch when you're wide open and you've got a touchdown, but this has haunted Georgia all season. Our drops. We have it either officially or unofficially seven drop passes by the Bulldogs tonight. And obviously nobody feels any worse than the junior out of Rockmart, Georgia, Danny Weir. Kenneth Harris in motion. They go with the running play. Where? Running hard and finally knocked out of bounds inside the 15 by Vince Hall. Well, we've been talking about Mike Bobo, the new play caller. And this is a situation, Ron, where you've got the momentum, you've got third and three. I, I think you may want to take a shot here. Uh, you Milner has been such a weapon. Try the play fake, see if you can suck it up, and let Milner get, get into the end zone. I, I think this might be time for that. Yards by half in this ball game. You see those numbers up there, and what a turn of events. It's Milner down there at the bottom. Third down, they need to take it to the nine-yard line. Blitz coming off the corner. They run away from it. Halfback pass. Lumpkin looking. Going to have to run it, and he'll be short of the first down at the 11-yard line. Vince Hall is the man who made the tackle. So what would and should have been a touchdown now appears to be turning into a field goal attempt. And Mark Rick is right now saying, you know, boy, <laughs> what should have been just simply didn't happen. And he goes right over to Joe Tereshinsky, the fifth-year senior quarterback, and shares a bit of a chuckle because they should have come away with seven on that. Brandon Kutu to attempt this field goal. Of 28 yards. Kick is plenty long and plenty good. He's already made kicks of 39 and 51. And add another one up there. And Georgia takes the lead. Would have been a touchdown, but this ball is dropped. 
so they wind up with a field goal. Georgia leads. Now, we talked about how dominating Virginia Tech's defense was in the first half. Folks, the Hokies have had the ball only nine snaps in the entire second half. Here's the kick. Coming down at the four to Eddie Royal. Turns the corner. 20-25 flag from deep downfield, and he'll spot him out of bounds at around the 31-yard line. So Virginia Tech takes it over at their own 12-yard line. Pass incomplete. Clowney, the intended receiver. And let's check in with Dr. Punch down on the sideline. Jerry. Well, Ron, 1998 was the last time the Georgia Bulldogs came to this game uh, led by a true freshman quarterback, Quincy Carter. And guess what? The dogs were down by 21 to an ACC power from the Commonwealth State, the University of Virginia. But they clawed back in the second half. And a true freshman led them to a come from behind 35-33 victory here on what was then called the Peach Bowl. Now the Chick-fil-A Bowl. That last play went for nothing, so it's third down. They got to take it out to the 22 yard line or punt it away. Glennon. Ball is tipped, it's intercepted. That's Tony Taylor. Touchdown, Georgia. Nope, they say he was down at the one foot line. Ball was tipped. Tony Taylor is the MVP of this team. And it's plays like this that do it. Oliver gets the tip. Excellent job. He's coming on the corner blitz. Stopped his momentum when he saw Glennon coming that way. But Taylor makes another big play. He had an interception against Colorado to end that game in the comeback. Had a fourth quarter touchdown return against Vanderbilt to help them almost win that game. Well, we talked in the first half about, as you see, seventh interception a season for Taylor. But the fact that uh, Paul Oliver, what a consistent player he has been, as this running play is not going to take it into the end zone, he has, at last count, I think, seven tackles and now a tipped pass, which turned into a return by Taylor to inside the one-yard line. And you have to feel so good for Tony Taylor. His father, Nate, was a walk-on, led the 1980 National Championship team in tackles. Had a terrible knee injury in 2004. He was on his way to being one of the great Georgia linebackers. So let's see if they do that. Power eye set to the left. Play action. He's going to try to throw it, and the ball is knocked away. Milner is the man that he wanted, and Rouse was the defender who knocked it away. Stafford threw that ball late. He had Milner should have thrown it right out of his break, but no need to get cute here. I think you go for it here on fourth down, and I think you just do a quarterback sneak. Don't let the speed of Virginia Tech be a factor. Lumpkin is going to be the lone setback this time. Number six. Well, I beg your pardon. Sutherland will stay in the ball game at fullback. And they give it to Sutherland. Touchdown, Georgia. Trip Taylor had come into the ball game and had a paving block. And Frank Beamer, after the way his club has turned this season around, you could see that look on his face in that distant stare. I guarantee you he can't believe what has happened to Virginia Tech tonight. Talk about in control. They were totally in control at halftime. The two with the extra point right down the middle. And the Georgia Bulldogs have turned into a scoring machine. 28 unanswered points here in the second half to take the lead. So let's take a timeout. Sutherland crashes the right tackle and into the end zone. 31-21, Georgia. Well, points off takeaways. 18 points by Georgia. You see the number for Virginia Tech. Here's the kick. Another spinner. Very high. And it's going to be returnable by Royal from the six. Near sideline crosses the 20. 
Jimenez bumped out of bounds at around the 23. Now it is Sean Glennon who has got to calm down and say, hey, teammates, let's get on into the end zone here. We're certainly capable. Short drop, quick throw. The ball is caught at the 20-yard line, and that's David Clowney, the senior out of Delray Beach, Florida. He's the man. Well, he's shaken up a little bit. He's going to stay on the field to play, but he is so fast, and he gives them vertical capabilities that they don't have with the rest of those receivers. Right, but if he can't run, Ryan, you've got to get him off. They've got other receivers healthy that they can get out there. But keep it on the ground, and the running play will pick up the first down or bump down by Jeff Owens. And it'll stop the clock for just a moment. One timeout remaining for Virginia Tech, and we have 4.45 showing on the clock. Graph working to his left. Oh, and it's, it's a... Just grabbed it right there as the big pile came on, but you you haven't worked any snaps, and it looks like to me that it is Schumann who has gone in at center. Boy, you'd really well it's shotgun, so that's a little better than being under center. Crowd comes to life. Clock runs again. Four minutes, 38 seconds remaining. Deep in the pocket this time. Throws for the end zone. Has a man there, and incomplete. Morgan could not hold on. Johnson and Evans with dual coverage, but the ball was thrown a little bit late. Yeah. Otherwise, that would have been a touchdown. You know, it wasn't a spiral either, Ron. Watch how this ball flutters in the air, and I think it slows it down. It hangs up in there. You, you yeah. know that, that Morgan is saying, come on, get, get here. here. Get come here. on, get, get here. here. Yeah. See how the ball's see, fluttering? Right open. Yeah, the ball fluttered on Glennon, and it hung up there. Evans was the man who got an arm on it. So it's second down and 10. Good protection, swings it out, and that's Orr. Tries to put a move on the defensive back end. Brian Evans says, uh -huh, I'm not going anywhere. So back to back, nice plays by him defensively. Well, the Tech offensive line has found a way to at least slow down the rush a little bit. They're going a little shorter drop. Instead of seven steps, they're going five so that they can run Johnson and Moses by Glennon. Glennon doing a little better job stepping up into the pocket. And now on third down, don't waste too much time, Ron, because of 10 points. If you don't get it, you kick the field goal. Here we go. Third down. They've got to take it down to the six-yard line to keep it going. Either that or put it in the end zone right here. Zings it complete. That's Royal. He's not going to have the first down. He's tackled at the 12. And again, it is Brian Evans, a redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville. Now, don't waste too much time. Get everybody out and get them set. You're going to fight the clock the rest of the game. So you got to make sure Pace gets out there and gets this thing off rather quickly. Clock runs now. It'll go under four minutes left in our ball game. Georgia 31, Virginia Tech 21. As the Bulldogs have turned red hot here in the second half of play. 28 yard attempt. Good pass, good kick, and it is uh, right through there. Three minutes, 41 seconds now left on the clock as Virginia Tech makes it a seven point ball game. Brandon Pace comes into the ball game. He will kick it off. And obviously, he is the good onside kicker. Well, and Virginia Tech looks like they're lining up for an onside kick. I, the way they've played defense, I think they can uh, try to kick this away. Well, let's see. They're certainly setting up for it. Georgia with the good hands team. It is an onside kick, and it's caught in the air at the 48-yard line by Georgia, and it's Chris Durham. Well, they tried that kick. You know, in college football, you can't put everybody to one side of the kicker. You have to keep at least four men on either side of the kicker. So they tried one right down the middle where he popped it up in the air and just didn't quite get high and didn't quite get it high enough. With three minutes and 20 seconds showing on the clock. Georgia leading this one in some kind of come from behind effort by seven points as Sutherland tries to turn the corner. He'll have about four yards. And it is a Wade, Kerry Wade, a redshirt senior out of Fairfax, Virginia, making the tackle. Well, and if this holds up, it will be the largest comeback under 
Mark Richt. Timeout called by Virginia Tech, and now the Hokies have none. They have no more left. Sutherland tries to bounce it outside. Going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. And Jerry Punch, let's go back to you. Ron talking about moving up now. The SEC commissioner Mike Slive is here, and they've been trying to negotiate over the past few months, talking about the Chick-fil-A Bowl people, to move up in the selection process in the SEC. What they have proposed is, why don't you let us rotate the third pick with the Outback Bowl and the Cotton Bowl, because this bowl has gotten so big, the payouts are huge. If you want the ACC kind of money, give us a shot to get a better team or a higher ranked team in the SEC. And, of course, Mike Slive is listening to right now the third pick rotates between Cotton and Outback. I can tell you right now, this bowl game here is going to do whatever it takes to move right on up there with the BCS teams because they have really got their scholarship money going and going in the right direction. Their endowment continues to grow, and they're doing it exactly the right way. As Lumpkin is tackled, it's going to be a fourth down, and now Frank Beamer cannot stop the clock. Well, and I, and I think because that Lumpkin got down in there, it, it looks like Mark Richt is thinking about going for it here. Fourth and about two. I, I think, well, I think you punt this away. No, I started to say, you don't go for this here. Yeah, I think, I think you got to punt this away. Yeah, he's, he's got Stafford over. They're going to wait until it gets right down to the very end. But, again, go back to using those two timeouts when Virginia Tech was on defense on the last drive. That's why they're going to get the ball back with a minute 25 or so left. So the play Offensive clock. Delay of game. Clock runs all the way down, and it runs to a minute and 31 seconds. Here's the boot, gets it away. It's a line drive, and it will carry into the end zone. So a minute 25 seconds showing on the clock, 44 yards on the boot. And now for Virginia Tech. They've got a minute 25 seconds so they can take advantage of the middle of the field run as long as it's beyond the sticks. Anything else has to be on the sidelines. The problem right now is you've got Charles Johnson and Quentin Moses. You don't want the ball in Glennon's hands for too long. So you see the numbers first half compared to the second half from the shotgun pressure. They throw the screen pass and going nowhere. That ball is going to be tackled for about a yard loss and again 43 Tony Taylor with an outstanding defensive play. Yeah and Glennon should have thrown that ball away. That Nine play. tackles now for Tony Taylor he, and Glennon just did that. That was a dead play. He should have thrown it away. He's costing a lot of time. 50 seconds left in the game. Going to go long. He's hit just as the ball is thrown and it is intercepted. No. Could not hold on to the football. Brian Evans. That would have really kept off an unbelievable evening for him. Quentin Moses was the man applying the pressure. Number 94. I think right now you've got to think about something deep to the right side but have someone slow down just beyond the sticks near the out of bounds. You've got two receivers on the top run one off and have one run an out route beyond the sticks and let him get out of bounds. Third down. They need to get to the 30 yard line. Steps up into the pocket is hit and is going to be sad. That ball is loose. It was recovered by Virginia Tech. Well I think the linesman came in and said he was down Ron so they're calling fourth down. Moses and Johnson were combining on the stop. Well, and this is just not, I mean, what an excellent get off. Boy, Charles Johnson got off on Dwayne Brown so fast, there was just nothing Dwayne Brown could do. Fourth down. Last attempt for Virginia Tech. Stepping up, gets the ball away, incomplete. Five seconds showing on the clock. And can you believe it? Virginia Tech, after having such a what appeared to be a firm grip on this football game at halftime. The nation's number one defense, and in the second half, Georgia has just totally had their number. Boy, Charles Johnson just absolutely blows off the ball. Dwayne Brown laid out of his stance two plays in a row. 
They call him the big bully, and this game was won by the big playmakers at Georgia on defense. Tony Taylor, Charles Dodson, Oliver, these guys played lights out. The guns go off, and now the fireworks, and the Georgia Bulldogs, under head coach Mark Rick, have come from behind in an improbable situation to beat a very good Hokey team who was just on fire coming in here, and their defensive unit ranked number one in the nation, and the Bulldogs did not look at stats and numbers. In fact, at halftime, they talked with their young quarterback, Matthew Stafford, and all the kudos in the world to Mark Rick and also to Mike Bobo because they settled him down completely and also to the defensive unit of Georgia and defensive coordinator Willie Martinez boy what a job they did as well Frank Beamer's ball club played well but 30 minutes is not an entire ball game and it wouldn't work tonight and now along with Ed Cunningham and Jerry Punch I'm Ron Franklin thanks for watching so long from Atlanta now here is Sports Center.